Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. This is part two of getting started with De Castillo's. This is an extension that allows you to create realistic structural elements such as columns, beams, bracing, and the connection between these elements. In part two, we're going to cover the rest of the functions. So if you're looking to create realistic steel structures, then this is the right tool for you. So let's continue with braces. So let's start by selecting a profile with a top left placement point. And we've already explored rotation, X and Y offset and mirror. So the one option that stands out is the double brace. But before that, let's create a brace. Start with the first click on one end and you can use the arrow or shift key to enable SketchUp inferencing. And the second click will set the path line for the brace. Pretty simple, and I'll just repeat the same workflow to create an X brace. Now looking at our preview, we know that the mirror option flips the profile but the double brace actually creates two of the same profiles side by side. And notice how the double bracing will also enable a few other settings. So if you want to explore these further, I recommend checking out the online documents for a more in-depth explanation. And we'll have the link for that in the descriptions. So now let's use the autofill, which is a much faster way to create braces. First, we have to make a selection that includes two columns and one beam. Next, we activate the fill vertical bracing and we get this preview. And now we can start to make some adjustments. For example, we can change between different types of layout like single bracing or K bracing. And once we're set, we can confirm to create the vertical bracings. And in the same way, we can create horizontal bracing. I'll select two beams, activate the fill horizontal bracing, and confirm my options. Next, we're going to explore how we can create connections and we can create connections from different combinations like beam to columns or beam to beam and pretty much anywhere structural elements connect. For example, let's add a connection between this beam and this column. First, we're going to set this to beam type and set the detail to end plate and we'll leave the rest of the settings as they are. Let's activate the build tool and first select the column and as we hover over the beam, we can see a little preview of the connection detail. And from here, all you have to do is click to confirm. To make some adjustments, we can use the selection tool to select our detail. And now we can go over the settings. For example, we can change the thickness of the plate. We can add bolts. We're also going to explore bolts later in the video. And if you ever want to delete your detail, use the selection tool again and use the delete option. So here are a couple of different details that you can apply as connection. Keep in mind that there will be more detail updates in the future. And here is an example of a brace to column and the beam to beam connection. So next, we're going to take a look at the base plates. If we check our column tab, we have a drop down option for base plates and you should have options one through four. But here in the base plates tab is where we can modify and create new presets. For example, if I select base plate four, I can change the length to say six feet. And when I update the preset, you will see that change reflect on our model. So now I'm going to create a new base plate. I'll change the name to BP7 and I'll use BP6 as my starting point. So basically this is a preset that I've already made before. 
So there are many adjustments that you can make for this example. I'm only going to increase the size as well as the thickness. And now I can save this as a new preset. So if I go back to my column tab, under my base plate options, I can load this from the drop down menu. Similarly, you can do this with bolts. We have a drop down option in the connections tab, and we're going to follow the same workflow to update and create new presets. So if you have the exact specs for a bolt, you can adjust these settings to be as accurate as you want. But as an example, I'm going to create a new half an inch diameter bolt based on one of my previous presets. So in the settings, I'm going to change the diameter to half an inch. Save. And now we can go back to the connections tab and select it from the drop down menu. So next we have plates, a very simple element. You can use it to seal the end of a beam. And it's very simple in terms of the setting. We only have a thickness value here. So as an example, I'm going to create a plate to seal off the end of this beam. I'll change the value to half an inch, activate the build tool, and here I can also press Alt to switch between rectangular and polygon mode. So this is the position you want to be in before you set the first point. Use the arrow keys to shift and lock the orientation to the green axis. The second click is going to set the width and the third is going to set the height of the plate. As you can see, very simple half an inch plate. For the next example, we're going to create a polygon plate. I've enabled the hidden line so we can see the hidden edges and also use the tape measure to create a guideline. Activate the build tool, press Alt to, to switch to polygon mode. You want to stay locked in to the green axis and tap Control to place the plate by center. So now we can set the first point, follow the next few points to create the corner, set the height, and here you want to use the arrow keys to lock to the red axis and click the corner point of the beam as a reference. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can edit this plate with SketchUp native tools. So for example, I can add circles to create holes and use bevel to round the corner. And the object is still recognized as a deck of steel plate, meaning you can go back to the builder's dialog and make changes. Next, we have the level manager dialog, which is used to create, edit, and remove levels. A level is basically a named elevation, so something like first floor, second floor, and third. And we can create as many as we want and save it to our SketchUp model file. So here, I'm going to create a new level. We already have the first floor, so we're going to create a second floor. Set the elevation at 18 feet. As for the type, I'm going to leave it at top of steels, but you can set these to any of these options. We'll save and set it as active level. So now when I create a new column, you will see that the active level is displayed at the top left of your viewport. You'll notice that the base level of the column is set to our active level of 18 feet. Another example is if we create a new beam, you will notice that the path point is locked to the active level. And this is excellent because even if you were to create a beam from the top view, the path point is still locked to the active level. So that's going to be all for this video. Hopefully a great introduction to Deca Steels. Be sure to follow Mind Sites on Instagram, Facebook, and on their website for more updates. To watch part one, click the video on the screen and we'll catch you guys on the next video.